Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Species Shorts. Um, my name is Lindsay Barone, for those of you who did not turn, tune into our first episode. Um, and what we're going to be doing in this series is exploring little snippets about human evolution in just 10 to 15 minute chunks. Um, for those of you who tuned into the first episode, you may remember that we talked about what makes a hominin a hominin and how we classify things as hominins when we discover them in the fossil record. Um, just a quick recap, basically when I use the term hominin, I'm referring to a lineage that splits off from the rest of the non-human primates and over millions of years eventually leads to one species and one species alone. And that, of course, is our species, anatomically modern humans, or the scientific name Homo sapiens. However, even though we are the only hominin species living today, we are not the only hominin species that ever lived. And in fact, over the last 7 million years, there have been many, many different species of hominin that have evolved and then eventually gone extinct. And so that's what we're going to do in each of our upcoming episodes. We're going to explore some of these individual species. And so today, we are going to start with the oldest known hominin that's ever been discovered. And that is this guy right here. Kind of cute, right? Um, so some of you may recognize this fossil, but for those of you who have maybe never seen this before, this is a species called Sahelanthropus chadensis. And yeah, the name is kind of a mouthful, um, but this is a really important species. It was first discovered in 2001 um, in the Central African country of Chad. And so far in the last 19 years, we haven't discovered anything older that is likely to be classified as a hominin. So this is the first example of a hominin in the historical fossil record. Before we talk about this any further, I want you all to take a really good look at this specimen. Um, second to actually being able to pick up the fossil cast and study it and feel it and turn it around in your hands, um, getting a really good look at the visuals of the details on this skull is a good way to get to know it before we talk about it. So I'm going to hold it up really close to the camera so you can get a better look. Just make some observations about what you see in the face. So this is its face. You know, what do you notice about it? This is what the side of the head looks like. This is the underside of the head. Um, in case you're all turned around, the face is over here. The back of the skull is over here. And then, of course, this is what it looks like from behind. Now, this is Sahelanthropus chadensis, the oldest member of the hominin lineage. Compare this guy to this one right here. Um, so this, in my right hand, is an anatomically modern human, or Homo sapiens. So basically, this is what our skulls look like underneath all of our skin and muscles and hair and all of that good stuff. So take a look at its face and look at it from the side. And here's the underside. And again, face is over here, back of the skull is over here. And then this is what it looks like from the back. So what kind of differences and similarities do you see? You know, these are both adults, um, but this one right here, Sahelanthropus chadensis in my left hand, seems to be a lot smaller, right? So it's got a smaller face. The brain is a lot smaller. Um, let's see if I can do this. So you can kind of see this is where the brain goes here and here. Um, this one's got a much smaller brain. Um, you might notice that the teeth, in particular the canine teeth, um, so these teeth right here, um, are a lot uh, bigger, more pronounced on Sahelanthropus than on the modern human. Um, you might also notice that the faces, so the front of the face, 
is a little bit flatter in a human than in Sahelanthropus chadensis. So those are some good observations to start with. Um, let's talk a little bit more specifically about Sahelanthropus chadensis, just leaving the human out of it now. So what do we know about this? How can we draw conclusions about where this fits in with the rest of the hominids? Well, first of all, like I said before, Sahelanthropus chadensis was discovered in 2001. And it was discovered in the Central African nation of Chad. So a lot of really famous hominin fossils and a lot of the ones we are going to talk about in this series um, were actually found either in Eastern Africa or in Southern Africa. But this one is a little bit more centrally located. Um, the site where this particular species has been discovered is right on the edge of a lake and in sort of a forested area. So not a big open African savanna, um, but was a little bit more of a densely populated forest. What else do we know about this? Well, this skull that I'm holding right here is presumed by the original discoverers to be male and an adult at that. We know that there were several other fragments of this particular species found at that site in Chad mostly having to do with the skull. Um, so they found this guy pretty intact. Um, they found pieces of the mandible, so the lower jawbone. Um, they found a couple of teeth. And then there is one leg bone that hasn't officially been, um, been assigned to Sahelanthropus chadensis. So they're not really sure that it belongs to this species, but it certainly looks like it does. So mostly what we know about Sahelanthropus chadensis comes from the head. You may notice when you're looking at this guy and when I'm talking right here, especially when you compare our faces side by side, that the eyebrow area is really big on Sahelanthropus chadensis. This is a feature that anthropologists sometimes call the superorbital torus. Um, or sometimes the brow ridge you might see it referred to. Um, but basically, if you feel your own head, this is the area that sits under your eyebrows. And so, you know, feel right above your eye underneath, or feel your eyebrow, and you might be able to feel a little bit of a bump there. Well, if you were this guy, you would have a really big, thick bump over those eye sockets. That is a feature that we see in a lot of the early members of the hominin lineage. It's something that gets lost as we get closer to anatomically modern humans. Um, and it's something that there's been a lot of debate about why exactly that feature exists. Um, another so thing that's really interesting about Sahelanthropus chadensis is that it's got a pretty narrow jaw. And it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting but basically, the teeth are in sort of a U shape. Now, in and of itself, that's pretty unremarkable. But again, when you compare it to something like this, you can see there's more of a parabola shape. So it's getting wider as it moves towards the back of the jaw. This is a feature having this wider uh, parabolic jaw um, this is something that we see in more modern hominin species, but we don't see it here, and we don't see it in some of the other non-human primates. Um, so it, it's a trait that is much more recently evolved than we see with Sahelanthropus chadensis. What else do we know about this species? Um, well, we know that it was likely bipedal. So we talked a little bit last time about what bipedalism is and what that means. Um, basically, being bipedal means you're walking upright on two legs. Um, and that's a unique defining trait of the hominins. That's not to say other animals can't do it from time to time. Certainly, we see gorillas and chimps walking around with things in their hands periodically. Um, but it's something that unifies all of the hominins. They all have that trait. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, you just said that there's not really any other parts of the body but the skull. How can they know that he was likely a biped? Well, 
One of the really unique things that we can look at, or rather one of the really telling things that we can look at to try and determine whether something was bipedal or not, is a feature on the skull called the foramen magnum. Um, for those of you who are pretty well versed in Latin, you might know that that translates basically to big hole, um, and that's what it is. Um, it's very hard to see on this particular cast, um, but the foramen magnum is basically right here, and what that is, is the place where the spinal cord connects with the skull. So I'll show you on the human skull, it's a little bit more obvious there. Um, you can see here's the, the big frame and magnum in the bottom of the human skull. Um, all of the primates have a frame and magnum, um, and other animals do too. I'm just focusing on the primates here. Um, the question though, is where is the frame and magnum in relationship or in relation to the rest of the skull? In a primate that is quadrupedal, that foramen magnum tends to be closer to the back of the skull. And if you think about it, that's because when you're on all fours, if you're an animal that usually walks that way, um, on all fours, the neck projects forward and off of the body, and so does the head. But if you're a biped like we are, you have a neck that goes more or less straight up, and then the head sits on top of that. So you have a much more centrally located frame and magnum that helps balance the head on top of that neck while you're moving around bipedally. So this is one of the things that anthropologists look at when they find a fossil skull and they're trying to figure out exactly how it moved around in its environment. Um, they'll look at the position of that frame and magnum and they'll say, okay, this was a biped, or maybe this was more likely quadrupedal. Um, a couple of last really interesting things that I want to point out on this skull before we wrap up for today. Um, one of the things that you can see on this skull is the presence of something called a nuchal crest. Um, and a crest, when we talk about it uh, with relation to bones, basically means that it's some bone that kind of comes to a point. Um, it's a little bit hard to just see. It's very easy to feel, though. Um, this is an area where you tend to have a lot of attachments for um, different soft tissues that might be attaching the head, the neck, and the shoulders. So we as humans, we don't have this noticeable crest like this. But for example, if you look at a gorilla skull, you see a really thick, big crest. Um, and again, that's one of those things that sort of makes people think, okay, well, this is clearly a very early hominin, but this also has some close relation to some of the other non-human primates. All right, um, so that is about all I have for today. Um, one last note I, I want to say before we wrap up and as we're talking about all of the other species as we move forward, um, is that you may be wondering why I'm being so free moving around and touching these fossils. Um, these are actually not the real thing. These are cast materials. So they're replica. They're mostly made of plastic and painted to look like the real thing. Um, this is what you would typically see in a classroom. Um, nobody really gets to touch the real fossils, um, but I, I, you know, they look so real that I often get questions about it. So I just wanted to, to point that out in case anyone was worried about the way I'm handling this. All right, um, on that note, uh, thank you for tuning in again today. If you have any questions that I haven't addressed, please put them in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will see you all on Friday at the same time. Bye.